Welcome back. Last week I left you off with the edit of Chris Cannon's Alive music video, which I believe is one of the first Instagram story music videos to have ever been released. The shoot was a lot of fun and we got to try out a lot of different things, but the edit was the primary challenge of making this music video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about that edit and all the different challenges that I encountered. And hopefully you'll pick up some great editing tips if you wanna start making your own vertical music videos or just vertical content in general or if you ever want to do a screen replacement which is something I learned the hard way this time. So I'm gonna be showing you some tips in Premiere. I'm gonna be showing you some tips in After Effects. If you wanna get better at those programs, you should watch this video. And this will be one of the last videos that we record in this space because Entrepreneur HQ is moving in just about 10 days. Let's get into it. Now, if you didn't watch the video about recording this music video, I suggest you check that out. I'm gonna put it right here so you can just click on that, watch that, get caught up to speed, come back, we'll talk about the edit. But pending that you are up to speed, the first challenge with this music video was reframing. Now here is scene one of the music video. If you are going to edit vertical content, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is go up here to sequence settings, and then we're gonna change this image from 3840 by 20. 160, which is 4K, to 1080 by 1920. And boom, we have our cell phone vertical view here. And now I'm just looking for points in the video where the center of the frame that I'm taking here was not the the, the place of action. So I had to move the, the video around a little bit. So I'm gonna just skip through this a little bit. And now he's coming up to the left side of the frame, ducks over to the right. So I'm gonna want to account for that. So let's move up. So if we just click this little position clock, button right here. We now have our first keyframe. It's this little diamond right here in the keyframes timeline. And then I can just kind of scrub over to where he's off frame and move him into frame by using the horizontal positioning. So right here, he's in frame. Now let's move a little bit more. And I don't like how it just pans over here. So we're going to move him back into frame and get that preacher walking away out of frame. And now let's review. That's much better. So that's reframing with keyframing. And we did a lot of that in this music video. The next thing that I needed after reframing the entire music video was a lot of Instagram UI screens. Our plan was to incorporate Instagram Live, Instagram TV, Instagram the platform with the regular old news feed, Instagram direct messages, Instagram stories. There was a lot of Instagram screens in this video. So I needed to get the assets, the actual graphic assets that make up the Instagram platform so that I could replicate it, overlay it over shots. So what I used was a combination of things, right? We have this uh, motionarray.com account. This isn't a sponsored mention. They didn't give me any money. I just used them. And they have a few different Instagram UI toolkits. So if I just search like Instagram Live, I get like the Instagram Live stream After Effects template. So they have a lot of templates that you can use. But also if you just search Instagram UI toolkit, you'll get a whole bunch of hits where you can download download entire UI toolkits that have a lot of the graphics from Instagram. Now, you can also go to Instagram brand assets. So I believe this is the website, assets, Instagram brand resources, right. I could have gone here and downloaded everything. They literally will give you everything that has to do with the Instagram platform. Here you can also apply to get permission to use all these screens. And I didn't do that. I didn't realize that they had all these things for me that I could have just downloaded. Rats. You can use a combination of After Effects templates on sites like motionarray.com or videohive.net, and you can download Instagram screens. So the first screen here, right, I actually got our buddy Casey Schumacher, who does all of our branding, to create me this animation that you see right here. And then right here, you'll see that it becomes an Instagram story at the last second, which I used an After Effects template from Motion Array for. This next screen was from a UI toolkit, and I believe I opened that in Photoshop. Let me just just double check here. Why, yes, I did. Wa-da-da-dang, right? We have all of these layers so we can 
put different pictures in here, put different usernames, we can put different text in the comments and stuff, and it's got all the fonts that we need as well. So that was majorly helpful, having all these Instagram UI toolkits. This one's for IGTV, I had to like manually animate this slider. But the resources are out there if you ever wanna do something similar. And with that said, let's get into screen replacement, which was the hardest part of this video, right? If we come here to the end of the video, we see this blue taped phone, right? We take blue construction paper over it. If you wanna do green screen replacement, you're gonna need to perfectly outline the square, it needs to be perfectly visible, and it needs to be in focus. If all those things are true, if you've got a perfect square for the screen of the screen you're replacing, and it's in focus, and it's well lit, and there's no tape over it, you can very easily replace screens in a scene. That's what we intended to do, was make it very easy and straightforward. It was not. Let's say you're going through editing your music video and you're just combing through it and then all of a sudden, bam, a screen that you wanna replace appears. The first thing we're gonna do is back up the timeline to the point right before that screen comes into view. And then I'm gonna trim the clip. You can do this by pressing Control K, creates these little edit points here. And I've already done that for both the in and the out points. So I've got this little clip here that I want to replace a screen on. So I'm gonna right click and click replace with After Effects composition. That's gonna open After Effects for me and we can get started working with After Effects tools to replace this screen as best we can. So I'm gonna scrub to where the phone is really in view, right about, there we go. That's about as good as it's gonna get, right? Then I'm gonna go to Effect and go to Boris Effects Mocha. Now, Boris Effects makes their own After Effects plugins and one of them is so good at tracking phone screens that After Effects just purchased the license and put it right in their software. So if you have After Effects, you have Mocha. So we'll open that up and then we'll click on the Mocha icon here and click start. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is set a mat. So I'm gonna click this little pen tool right here and I'm just going to draw around the edge of this, the phone's screen. This is what's called a garbage mat. And then we can click this S icon to show where the planar surface actually is. So I'm gonna move this to the actual corners of the phone screen as best as I can tell where they're at since this construction paper isn't so great. All right, I think that looks about right. And I'm gonna drag this garbage mat out a little bit to just give it some more space. And then we're just gonna press this track button to track forwards. We'll go back to the beginning here and we'll just track backwards and here's where it's probably gonna have a little bit of trouble. Still holding up, still holding up. It's actually doing really good right now. I wish it had done this well when, when I tried to do it. So now what this has done is it's basically told After Effects, hey, here's where the corners of this screen are. Now I need you to translate that into corner pin tracking data. Corner pin is an effect where you can basically manually set the corners of a rectangle on the screen. Instead of me having to keyframe every corner of what I want to put on that screen until it looks like it's actually on the phone screen, After Effects will track where the corners should be based on what I'm tracking right here. That's really helpful, but it's not perfect. Especially if you haven't perfectly taped the construction paper or you don't have an actual green screen going on. So if I just save this uh, this Mocha file and then I exit out of it, we now see that the tracking data is available. So what I need to do is pull in something that I'm going to put on that phone screen. Let's just do that real quick and see how it's up here. Now I'm gonna click back on this footage that has the Mocha tracking data on it and I'm gonna click Create Track Data. I'm going to click this gear icon next to layer one so that I can put it there. And now it's got all of the corner pin data that I was telling you about. See, we have top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. So we're going to choose the export option corner pin, support motion blur, because we want the motion blur of the, of the moving screen. We don't want to have to add that in secondarily. And then we're going to choose the layer to export to, to this second layer that I just added. And then we'll click apply. And it's not so bad. Now, Mocha doesn't do so well when objects are passing in front of the screen you're replacing, obviously. I actually had to manually corner pin a lot of the shots in this video. So for instance, this shot is manually corner pinned and it's quick enough so that the, the illusion is maintained. If I show it to you in the actual sequence, it looks pretty good. So here's all of my corner pin keyframes that I used for this shot. And you can kind of see this little trail of them. If we just shut off the direct
directional blur effect, it doesn't look so great. It looks a little bit jerky. So let's turn back on that directional blur effect and we see that it gets the motion blur that it's supposed to get. And that's all done with keyframes. I can set the actual direction of the motion blur, which if I move it a little bit, it looks wrong, but we know it's supposed to kind of be going that way. And then I can change the actual blur length to be more appropriate to what else is going on in the scene. And the effect is maintained. So if you wanna do screen replacement in some of your shots, the thing that I would recommend highly is first of all, shoot with an incredibly high bit rate. We use 400 megabits a second out of the GH5 for this shot. Next, make sure that the screen is in focus when you're shooting it. And if you're gonna use construction paper, make sure that it is meticulously cut into a rectangle and use double-sided sticky tape to, to put it on the screen. And those are kind of all the tricks in my tool bag for this video edit. That is, that is the entire host of effects that I use to create this video. So if you wanna do something similarly audacious, I hope that this video serves to show you you can do it even if you know nothing like I do. And I'll put links to some great tutorials for that below if you wanna do it yourself. I've also put a link to the finished video below if you'd like to check that out. With that said, I've been Circa for Full Stack Creative. If you like this video, make sure to like the video, subscribe and ring the bell to get notified every time we drop more videos like this. And if you do, I'll see you in that next video. Peace.